Yep, here we are once again. Welcome to Binary Jazz. Uh, it's a podcast. Uh, I'm here as uh, per usual with my friends, uh, Gary and Allison. That's Binary Gary, and or over there probably, and Allison Plus. Uh, okay. And uh, we are uh, recording on a Friday. It's St. Patrick's Day, if that recording matters. Recording on a computer. On when you're both the... wearing green, I have a green mm. pen. I don't know if that counts. <laughs> you have to like hook it into your shirt yeah. to officially qualify as as. I I think it's silly, <laughs> but also, you know, I I'd rather just not have the social interactions that come from not wearing green today, and I had to be on other calls. <laughs> For this only call, I would have given no thought to my wardrobe. I didn't even think. Not about... that I don't think of you, but I I think that you people would less. Care We're not going to pinch you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm probably not for that. We can't other really, reasons. we can't really pinch you, Gary. Um, but I did think about it last night, and I pulled Pinching out. Pinching me? No. Oh. <laughs> my my wardrobe so for the day, and I pulled out the single green article yeah. of clothing that I have. <laughs> I I uh, I bathed this morning. Uh, yeah, good. Me. And uh, and then I went to get dressed. It was like, oh, should find something with green on it. And uh, this was the first one. So this is what we got. I uh, mostly own black clothing. I yeah. didn't didn't think about it at all. <laughs> and that's why I have my green pen. <laughs> Feels a little dingy, honestly. I think it's just the age of the shirt. It's the material's good, so it's not wearing out, but also like the collar's a little and it looks a little dingy and whatever. No one cares. What does one do on St. Patrick's Day that's not like drinking guinness well we do a fun thing here where um i should be quiet in case the kids are listening oh are you gonna, talk about, are you gonna talk about the the leprechauns making a big mess they didn't make a big mess they turned the milk green oh okay they okay, left okay, some okay. candy coins that's it and okay. uh and a cake pop for each kid oh that's nice yeah. We're all the, the milk is the, the milk is funny because it's like you open the, the Gary fridge has and the milk is... on and we're all whispering. Yeah, Gary, Gary... <laughs> there's no risk of us being heard. <laughs> I was just like, I don't know yeah. who I'm whispering for on my end. I appreciate the solidarity though. Um, but yeah, you open the fridge and the milk is green, and it's like That's I said cool. to Charlotte, I said, "Do you think a leprechaun peed in it?" And she's like, "No, they just <laughs> use food coloring." No, Dad. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um i don't know you could if you have like irish ancestry you could talk about your ancestors i don't know anything about them though i know uh, that i know that i make do... a green milkshake that's always feels like mm. a classic <laughs> <laughs> i know that i do have uh irish ancestry but i don't know anything about it i mean i i only know Would that really because the name irish, Reynolds is irish something about my ancestry would I say what now? Irish, I knew something about my Irish, ancestry. yeah, I, I wish I did know <laughs> something. so dumb. It's so dumb. <laughs> I think that works better as a joke when you read it as opposed to saying it because, yeah. It, she goes had a terrible greeting card. I asked, like, uh, I asked the Bing chatbot what, what I should do. Uh, yeah. And it said, uh, go on a virtual tour of Ireland uh go to a parade uh drink guinness is on the list yeah of course famous for driving all the snakes out of ireland so <laughs> i set my um emoji status at work to be a snake today <laughs> since i am not in ireland because you're not in ireland you could have yeah. irish soda bread you could mm. yeah there's lots of food related things i suppose yeah like potatoes i feel like yeah that's, that's what i said like it's like do we, do we have an irish food and, and aaron's like sure and i'm like so what potatoes <laughs> like various forms of potatoes <laughs> i once upon a time when i was a runner um i did um a half marathon with a friend and he you know those like potato sacks you can microwave a potato so you microwave a potato and then wrapped it in like a bunch of aluminum foil and he was like it'll keep my hands warm before we start and then once you get running i can eat it so i thought that was weird but it's what he did it's it's you know why you thought it was weird is because it is weird <laughs> okay well that's helpful <laughs> that's uh, a, that's a i have never come across that and i also but like we're sitting at the starting line everyone's wearing like a layer that they're gonna like 
you know, dump when they, once they get moving and generally all those get picked up and donated, which is cool. Um, and he's out there in just his, you know, short sleeve shirt with his potato, <laughs> keeping his hands warm. And then we started running and he starts peeling. <laughs> like it's also hard to eat and run like that. Yeah, that, that's not the easiest finger food. <laughs> well, the nice thing about it is you can bite off of it. Like it's I, and it stays in it. one piece. It's I, not like biting I a stick it. It's going to like shed food everywhere. And but it's like um, hearty. I, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I well, just, I mean, it was a long race. It was like, I think it was a half marathon. So 13 miles. So he had plenty of time to eat it. <laughs> when I would run distances that I needed to eat on, I would take, um, for a while, I didn't do this very long because it got gross. I would take um, raisins with me, like a box of raisins. But if it's in your pocket and you get sweaty, well, now you have like swollen, salty raisins, which are not Ew, the best so thing gross. in the world. Oh, no. Yeah. And now that I said it, it sounded grosser. Then it's it, my experience, and I wish I hadn't said it. So yeah, because that's probably one way not to make friends. As an to, to, yeah, to 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 <laughs> dramatize to dramatize Swollen, salty raisins. Well, but here's the thing, though: raisins are dehydrated grapes, right? Yeah. So you are rehydrating the grapes with your own sweat, which is really gross, and then eating it. Well, yes. <laughs> yes, that's all true. All of it is true. I'm not arguing with any of it. Um, Sometimes we just have to have to live with the mistakes that we make <laughs> along the way. Yeah, yeah. I'm glad that we're recording it, so it will be yeah. in perpetuity. Yeah, it's, yep. it's there forever. Yep. yep. When uh, in several hundred, oh look, an ant. And in several hundred years, um, this is the only remaining proof that podcasts ever exist, and this episode is what they're referring to. Do that ant just crawl into the footstool? Ooh, I don't That's like this. I don't like good. where this story is going. Yeah, one bit. Right? <laughs> this is an episode of X Files, isn't it? <laughs> this is when you lift up the cushion and there's an entire nest of ants. Uh, I have a reminder uh, that I set <laughs> I last week, uh, last or earlier this week, I suppose. Was it? Yeah, it was earlier this week on Monday. It doesn't matter uh, for the people that are listening several hundred years It doesn't. Years yeah, it really doesn't. But I have a reminder that the topic today might be how to meet people as a grown-up because it came up. Uh, well, we know wanted, how not wanted, to meet people. I wanted to make, up. yeah, I wanted to make sure that I, that, that it was, a, that we came back to it. If we didn't have anything else better to talk about, that, that, that this could be a topic of discussion. Uh, and yes, definitely the, <laughs> on the list of how not to, to make, to meet people and make <laughs> friends as a grown-up is, is telling you stories about <laughs> Or offering fluid. them. Would you body like some fluid, swollen, salty raisins? raisins. <laughs> oh. uh. My um, sister-in-law um, hates raisins. Um, she's diabetic, so growing up, that was like her special treat. It was like, you can have raisins. So now she's like, F that. I don't want raisins in anything. I'm so over raisins. So I get it. That yeah. makes sense. The backstory yeah. makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, so with this topic... And when the reminder came up, I said in our Slack, I don't have any answers, but I have theories. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I'm happy to dig into those. Yeah, I, I, I have some theories, too, that I have not tested. <laughs> I don't even mean like testable theories. I, I think I even mean like zoomed out a layer. So I think the fact that we're having this conversation is indicative of just the ebb and flow of... Um, uh, fear and trust of neighbor that just happens as part of the human condition. And I think the current media environment has contributed over the last decade plus mm -hmm. of more and more fear of neighbor. And mm -hmm. I think the we're past the bottom and coming back the other way. And I think the expectation should be over the next decade that we are going to identify that we as humans are in fact pack animals. And there are going to be more and more opportunities to be like, what about IRL? And that's going to start being a thing that happens more and more. So this, like, how do we make friends thing is going to become less and less because it's, there's going to be natural opportunities for it to take place. That's my theory. So I, I don't theory. disagree with your theory, but it does require me leaving the house. <laughs> and I, mean, I think that there most... will be compelling reasons to do that, that as, as the ebb and flow comes, there will be compelling reasons to do that that are, are natural and not forced. There's going to yeah. be your people, your tribe is going to have something and you're going to be like, oh, that actually seems like it's worth leaving the house for, whatever that thing is. Right. Um, and 
mm-hmm. and that's going to click. And when that hits, it's going to be like, I didn't know I needed this in my life, but I'm glad it's here. Yeah, I. Uh, so my theory has always been, well, like if I wanted, if I desired to venture into the world and leave the house, um, there's, you know, any number of TTRPGs happening mm. in in person in various places. And I'm on a couple of different discords that are local. One of them is more active than the other. Uh, I know that there's a bookstore that's a specifically a fantasy and science fiction bookstore that hosts a uh, game night. Um, there's like game stores and stuff. So there's very, there's a lot of opportunities for me personally to, to get out there and meet people if I wanted to, and even find games that would click with me as opposed to, as opposed to just like whatever the thing that's available is like the one thing, you know, um, there's opportunities to sure that, that, that too. Um, no, I'm just saying that's the things available, at least around here. <laughs> we go to a game store. We play magic the gathering. Yeah. Know. Yeah, so our game store, our local game stores, plural, uh, have that, but they also have other things too. And 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 with, I mean, some of them are maybe a little bit of a drive away, but still, like, um, there's stuff. Um, so I always feel like if I if I wished to, there's that avenue available. And I've been thinking about that more as uh, I've been thinking about like, um, you know. The current group is largely the kids' friends. The kids are going to be potentially, you know, off doing things next year. We have at least one player who's going to go off to Colorado next year to go to to go to college. Um, you know, my kids are going to be like my daughter is going to be maybe entering into an actual high school, and my son is going to be taking classes at community college. And we don't know what those schedules are going to be like. The schedule scheduling is at least going to be a thing. So, like, I'm thinking about like, you know, what a post this year campaign would look like and maybe it looks like not having it or maybe it looks like you know a couple people from this group jump on to something else elsewhere or something um so i've been thinking more about like you know just keeping my eye on like opportunities that are that are out there um because i do think that if i didn't have that one thing that even if i'm running a game with you know a bunch of teenagers um, it's still a thing that it's interacting with other human beings, and occasionally uh, there's another parent besides besides Aaron, um, and and that's cool too. Um, and and uh, there would be a, a distinct like emptiness if there wasn't anything filling that space. Yeah, like you would need some substitute of yeah. whatever that looks like. So now it's a question of what will it look like? It could right. morph into a bunch of different stuff. Okay, that makes sense. I mean, I won't, I'm, I'm okay at leaving the house generally. Um, when, when the moment strikes, when there's something that's like <laughs> purposeful to, to yeah. go out there for, like, I'm like, oh, I've taken roller skating classes. I've, um, what else have I done? I went to this like little mini arts conference in my town. I've gone to like various things, but like, it's difficult when you're in also like the land of retirees because I'm mm-hmm. like, oh, all these people are great. All these people are in their 70s and 80s, <laughs> which is great. And I don't mind making friends with them, but I'm like, oh, I would like some like peers. I- I- I'm not particularly young. <laughs> yeah. So I would like that like middle of the road friendship level peer group. <laughs> I have two young developers on my team. Um like in their 20s. Uh-huh. I can't believe that's young, but that's young. And um, it is just so funny the things I notice that I'm like, oh yeah, I remember that kind of like, maybe not ambition, but that like blind drive or like <clears throat> uh, tenacity, maybe is another word, stick to Um Well, it's a kind of like, it's a it's a different kind of energy. It is. That yeah, goes and I'm away like, as you get older. I yeah, I'm like, <laughs> like I have conversations with them, like maybe we maybe we can solve this a different way. Like maybe it doesn't have to be code. Like, there's something about like, um, maturity that um, <laughs> you're like, you know, like I, I don't actually have to be the person that that solves it. Like I can, maybe this can be handled a different way and. Uh, maybe it's just like I'm lazy and I don't want to write code. I'm like, maybe someone else can do this. That's not that part's not true. I mean, that's a little bit true. Um, yeah, I don't know. So it's it's uh it's interesting to see that and and see myself in that and like also like, well, all right, I'm getting old. Do you, 
Do you remember when you were younger and people were like, oh, you don't have the perspective I have, like when grownups were like, you don't have the perspective that I have, wait until you're older, you'll understand and like all that. And now that I'm older, I'm like, oh, I do kind of understand. That's, that's <laughs> I, really annoying. <laughs> I distinctly remember that in like my teenage years. In early career, I remember it a little, but I also remember seeing it as like, um, I at least had a relationship and it'd be like, can you explain that more? And them explaining it and maybe not getting it, but at least recognizing that, we did have different realities and maybe their years of experience had something to say that I didn't quite understand yet. I didn't understand it for sure. Um, and I, I guess I'm curious what that looks like and, you know, hopefully I have any more years to experience that, but I'm curious what that looks like going forward, like long-term, you know, mm -hmm. in, in my fifties and sixties, will I look back and be like, Oh, I was so blank in my forties, you know, like that'll be really fascinating. I don't know. I remember talking to my granny about it when she was in her nineties and like, man, you just don't really care about anything. And you're when, <laughs> like, when she went, hit 100, it was just like, why? Like, f not that she didn't care about anything, but there was just a certain like Buddhist unattachment style. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm just I think... being like, this is all temporary. Like I've made it this far. And, yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, I everybody. think you need to be, I think you need to be if you're a hundred or I think you need to be when you're staring death in the face in general, because if you're not able to be detached, then you're going to be miserable. And there's no point in spending your days miserable because you're afraid of, you know, yeah. the end. If you're so, if you're close to the end, like there's, this is like, that's something that like I've sort of observed in uh, my father-in-law um, as he has, you know, had to come to grips with uh you know his cancer and that it's not going away and you know like if you don't if you don't accept that if you fight that then then you're just it's you spend just a lot of energy miserable. yeah for nothing yeah, yeah exactly so so the only thing you can do is you know be grateful for for what you've got now be grateful for you know being able to do things that that you can do today and because mm -hmm. maybe tomorrow you know, it'll be, that'll be the last tomorrow. You know, you don't know. Um, so I, before it's, this it's, call, it's a lot harder for the rest of us. Yeah. <laughs> before this call, I had a call every month or so with an old strategist. Well, not old, a strategist friend I used to work with at, uh, at tribe. Um, and we set up these calls, like when he left tribe, he left before I did. And we just like once a month we'll, we'll chat and some months we skip cause it's busy and whatever. So we probably talk realistically six to eight times a year. Um, and uh, when we set up these calls initially, it was just like, let's just keep in touch. Like who knows where it goes. And it has turned into um, like a lot of personal philosophy. It's really fascinating just how it's sort of ebbed and flowed that way. Cause we, I think at the same time we were struggling with some similar things about like, um, you know, what does it mean to be, um, you know, whatever a, a parent, what does it mean to be, um, a professional in this industry? What does it mean to be uh, an employee versus um, a contractor versus an owner and all these odds and ends? And um, anyway, I'm totally uh, killing this part. Um, but uh, on this call previously, like just a, like less than an hour ago, we were talking about um, uh, the, the concept of personal like self-discipline and um, what does that look like? You know, and, and it looks different in your, as you age. And so one of the things that I've, I've found recently for me is like, um, a focal point for me is like, well, what, you know, what are you doing this for? And the answer is tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So that's a big, that's a big word. I hang a lot on when I'm making mm -hmm. decisions about things. It's about tomorrow. Like, um, and we even talked about, you know, like, like going on like team trips and like deciding, like, I'm not going to stay up until 3 a.m. And, and drink, right? I'm going to go to bed at 10 o'clock or something, or, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, the conversation like, well, you don't want to, you know, hang out and socialize. Well, no, I've got a big day, day tomorrow. Like, what do you have going on? Like, well, my life, like that there's, you know, there's like that thing there and, uh, and hanging that on it um, a different, like, in a, like framing it a different way. Um, mm -hmm. So the concept of like, you know, tomorrow, like, yeah, maybe not, but it does serve like a, great motivator for me at the moment mm -hmm. um, at least in forms of deciding what the right thing to do is 
effort wise and very much in the professional vein, not like in the personal vein. Yeah. I think that, I think that Alice into the original sort of, I think in inspiration for the question, uh, you're in a very interesting situation because you're on an island and the island has a limited population. And it's, and also like, it sounds like a lot of that population is not of a demographic that you necessarily uh, are part of. So like, not only so there's like there's like inherent challenges in your specific situation that make it even like that introduce new hurdles to an already uh complicated question um of like how do we how do we how do we make friends as adult humans who aren't in school anymore yeah um, i mean that, so that's much the big so that now i'm i might be going back to school and i'm like right. is this just because i'm making friends i, need I mean to make friends? yeah i mean honestly like like, and to that point, like, part of the motivation for my daughter to going back into an actual school is because we have struggled to find peers that are her age that are girls in the unschooling social circles yeah. that we have been. And, and that's been like an ongoing thing. And she just, and like, we've tried like other sorts of things, like extracurricular yeah. sort of stuff and whatever, and like, you know, get her involved in other things. But a lot, like, she does aerials, but a lot, she's the youngest person at the aerial studio. Um, I mean, there's, there's a couple other teenage girls, but they don't, they're not in the same classes and it's not like a, a hangout thing. And it's, you know, um, well, when it's already such a small, like yeah. a small niche, right? it's just like, again, to go back to my granny, when she was at the retirement home, she was living at, she's just like, I don't know why everybody expects us to be friends just cause we're all old. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Like, yeah. there's, like, she's like, we've all lived different lives, you know? And I'm like, okay, valid. But I always think of that because I'm just like, just because someone's in the same age range doesn't necessarily right. mean you're going to find that overlap. I mean, it's helpful. Yes, yes. But like- And that's the thing that we not. found too. Like, yeah. like she's been doing this this drama thing and there are, you know, some girls, a lot of them are, are younger than her. I think most of them are. Um, and there are some people that she's made like sort of, a little bit maybe deeper than surface level connections with but it's not like friend friends and nobody's asking for anyone's phone numbers or anything um, yeah it's more just like acquaintancy like yeah. we're on fine terms mm -hmm. and this is fine yeah yeah so yeah. but it, it but it's very much that thing of of you know just because we're all in the same room together or just because we're all the same age or, or whatever it doesn't necessarily mean we're we're friends i had yeah. uh i i had the occasion um uh, like a week and a half ago to be at a funeral for someone that was sort of a pillar in the community around here um, did a lot of volunteering and stuff. And so at the funeral, um, the priest was talking about um, this, uh, she had been having conversations with this person's friends. Uh, the lady that died, it was, it was somewhat sudden and unexpected. Um, although she was in her low 70s, she wasn't unhealthy and she was, you know, very independent. So this was, this was a somewhat of a shock. Um, and uh, one of the friends that the priest had talked to had recounted a conversation they had just had on the phone, um, like you know, a couple weeks prior to her passing, and it was um, the woman that died had said to this this friend, um, uh, in on the topic of um, moving, like, well, you can't move. We just started this friendship, and I'm not ready for it to end yet. Mm. And I thought that was like a very beautiful thing um, at the time. And of course, like, why? If, that's why you would include it in a, in a eulogy or whatever, right? Um, uh, but, but it kind of struck me like, or strikes me now thinking about the nature of friendships and, and speaking of friendships, even as we age that, um, I think that maybe that's some perspective that we can take from older folks is that like, I, I I've decided we're going to be friends and that's that, <laughs> like, <laughs> we're going to, you know, like, um, do either of you have friends that you are still in touch with that like from, like high school or yes. earlier or uh college or whatever one person but yes yeah well a few people, Rhonda but my my situation i went to like a boarding school so i feel right, like that's different yeah it's it was a little more like Intense. throwing us into the deep end yeah. <laughs> i think because um, yeah. i i and i part of this I, i've just sort of generally blamed on moving a lot when i was like before high school like i don't have any friendships from prior to high school and everyone 
that I went to high school with that I was friends with and that I have any amount of con connection with now it's like Facebook friend level like there's yeah. there's maybe there's like one person maybe who if we were in the same city at the same time we might go to coffee mm -hmm. but like I, otherwise like it's not like i'm in touch with any of them outside of i like think about people media. i knew in high school and 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 note that uh in any of those relationships they put in as much effort as i did to keep it going um so i don't have uh any long-standing friendships from high school and sort of don't care um so if you're listening you're from high school <laughs> <laughs> whatever um the, the one person i do know um uh from around that time though is my friend evan um who lives in tampa and we've you know it's sort of ebbed and flows through the years there's some times where we talk maybe three or four times in a year and then there was times where we talk like daily and you know it just kind of depends on what's going on in the world and our lives and all that kind of stuff so yeah and i don't i don't have any real like i don't have very many connections from college that i'm actually actively in touch with either like it's basically yeah. like every all of my everyone who i would consider to be a friend is somebody who i've met through work and maybe i don't work with them anymore um but those are the people that i'm in touch with more yeah exactly <laughs> yeah like like y'all and and like and you know some, some people at human made let's and... not let's not rewrite history though i started working with you and you quit that job that's true so... <laughs> <laughs> In that order, exactly. Like, yeah, I started. And we started working like, together, and then I was just uh -uh. gone. <laughs> yeah, not doing it. Um, yeah. Let, let's be real, though, Gary. I had one foot out the door when you joined. <laughs> that just <laughs> <laughs> one final shove was all it yeah. took. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's like, oh yeah, I've made the right choice. <laughs> <laughs> so. I had a very interesting career path because I have this like distinct, like I spent like a decade ish in the import export, well, import world and other weird stuff. No before... business, Gary. Who, yeah. who is he? <laughs> it wasn't though. That's the thing is it was it like business. Okay. It was really just like uh raw capitalist. It, it's, it's gross. That's it's even gross. weirder though. It's just like this it is. alternate well, timeline weirder. version of who I know you to be. <laughs> but this Gary wouldn't exist without that Gary. Of course. That Gary, that Gary needed to exist and die for this Gary to to be like. I mean, I, would, I started. I, would I started, so watch this show, <laughs> the sci-fi show. I started. Oh, I started cool. my my career in web development by doing technical support, you know, and then and then quitting that and and saying, well, this thing that I used to do as a hobby, maybe I could make money doing it. Um, it was it was hobby for me, and it was. Um, I mean, I've probably shared it before, but I, I think it's worth sharing again. Um, I uh, was very close to my family, both, you know, relationship wise, but also like less than three miles from my parents is where I lived with my parents, my grandma and uncle lived. And um, my grandmother died suddenly um, December 23rd. And I came home early from work, which was a rarity. And then sometime later on in January, I was kind of reanalyzing my relationship with work, working too many hours a week. And I came home early and uh, my son at the time said to me, oh no, who died? And that was like this great wake up for me. Like somebody has to die for you to get home soon. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and that was, that was part of the transition. That was six months after my nephew died, my grandmother died. And then uh, in June of that year, my, uh, my godfather, my uncle, very close uh, died. And I, I've often referred to as the first ner nerd I knew. Um, and someone that's uh, just, just an example for me. Actually, the gaudy um, Zeus I have on my wall. Um, my oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The picture up there right now is um, a picture of he and I in Cleveland, Ohio, when I was like 10 or 11 years old. That's the mm -hmm. image I put on top of it for now. Sometimes I put like a little computer on top of it and other odds and ends, but that's the one that's been up there recently for a bit. Um, actually, to coincide with um, really, I guess almost six months starting this this job uh, working at NASA, which was like a um, very exciting thing for me. And it, it, I don't know, I guess, uh, what's the word on the nostalgia? Like there's something, there's, there's something addictive about nostalgia and, and, and that, you know, remembering that and sort of feeling as though I've 
I've gotten to where I wanted to be. Took a weird path to get there. Um, <laughs> so. Yeah. This is the first, like, we've we've had we've we've toyed with with having questions on the show many times in various different incarnations and this is the first real question i mean not real real i mean it's because it, you made you had questions <laughs> I, and I then know you what had, you mean. <laughs> but like this is the first sort of serious thing and i don't know that we have come to a conclusion or any sort of answer <laughs> i i feel like i i well i'm not persuaded in any way so there's that you're right there is no answer that I've that we've come to here. I do think though that I am perfectly comfortable without answering it. Well that's um, true. I mean I'm just going on regardless. Yeah. It's funny yeah. though because here I talked to someone and they were like, oh, because they were just like between COVID and then just like island folk being island folk, mm -hmm. um, they're like, it'll take like five years for you to make friends. And I was like, cool, cool. Yeah. Okay. How do how here. do we fast forward that though? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but you know, I'm still going out and doing stuff. Like I'm going to a book club later this month that we'll see. Is it know, a book? Like... Is it a book that you like? Well, you know what they did a really, it's put on by a bookstore that I like this little okay. indie bookstore. And, um, what they did was choose a theme. Okay. So then everybody chooses a book that a book fits of into their the own theme. that fits into the theme. That's nice. And then you, we're just going to go around a circle, talk about what we loved about our book. It's more like yeah. a, it's a book club, but it's more like, like a, a mini book report class. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm, Social book reports. I'm like, if I don't walk out with a friend, at least I'll walk out with some book recommendations. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. 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 It's a Trojan horse approach. Like, like we're going to talk about this topic and we're just going to disguise it in the theme of the yeah. book. Well, yeah. I mean, that's okay. sort of what, that's sort of totally what book works. clubs are, you know, I hear from afar, uh, are, are, in general, is just like an excuse to talk about things that maybe the book talked about, or maybe the book sort of skirted around. Mm -hmm. um, but it's important, I think, oh. like like the the types of books that you read in that club or a club, um, to define sort of the tone. I think so. Uh, that that would be the one thing that I would because if it's not the sort of ty the type of thing that you want to be. Thank you for listening to Binary Jazz. If you like this episode, you can subscribe to us on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, and Stitcher. You can visit us online at binaryjazz.us or follow us on Twitter at at binaryjazz. Special thanks to Serpiente Negra Ensemble for the use of their tracks for our intro and outro music. You can find them online at serpientenegra.bandcamp.com. Don't forget that you can ask us a question through the forum on the website or on Twitter, and we'll read it aloud on the next episode of Binary Jazz.